Hi folks, welcome back to Game Geeks. I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Today's episode, Swashbucklers of the Seven Skies. This is, I know, a hard copy book. I haven't done one of those in a few weeks. This is a role-playing game by Chad Underkoffler. If I mispronounced your name, Chad, I'm really sorry. You can mispronounce mine whenever you need to. We Germans have got to stick together. It is a game that uses the PDQ system, which we have previously reviewed in Truth and Justice and the Zantabulous Sorcerer of Zolt. This is a very rules light system that has a lot of similarities to the Fate engine in that you sort of design, you design what your own attribute is, you describe it however you want to. Now, this uses a modified version of PDQ called PDQ Sharp, which has been specifically engineered and designed for the purpose of simulating swashbuckling, sword fights, swinging from ropes, a lot of dramatic daring do. The setting itself, I f for this game, I find to be particularly fascinating. It is a fantasy world where it is a lot of floating sky islands with sky ships that can fly between them. The entire world, the entire setting rather, rotates in different pieces of a circle, different areas of the skies that have different effects for you to be in. It is lovingly described in terms of what each level of the sky does at a given time at each season. So there's a lot of factors you have to consider. There's also many nations that are described in here that are similar enough to, to nations that exist or have existed in our world that you can kind of hang your hat on them and understand what they are, where they're unique enough though that you can really carve out your own niche. Each island is described in its own way. There's a strong feeling of Colden or mysticism contained in this game. And there's also the, um, the entire fencing aspect. This is really a, a very heavily Three Musketeers, magic sort of fantasy inspired setting where there's a lot of exploration of jungle areas and different islands that come in and up out of the blue. Uh, different times for you to look at and parts of the islands that have disappeared. Pirates that are chasing you around. Firearms, the system itself assumes that you can swashbuckle in one area. Now that doesn't necessarily mean swinging from the chandelier while you're kissing the woman and, and fencing with someone at the same time. It just means the area where you do really, really cool stuff. The game itself, like all the PDQ products, have a very good description and multiple examples of how you should run the game, how the system can work, how you can bend the system to your favor. Also, it has a nice system for fighting extras or mooks, whatever you want to call them. Good ways to use the PC's foibles against them. Some really great behind the curtain, which is something that this particular author is very good at, is giving you some sort of, here's why I designed it the way I did. Maybe you can use that information this way or that way, however you'd like. If you like the PDQ system or if you like rules light systems in general, if you're interested in a fantastic swashbuckling sort of game where you have a lot of the features that exist in a lot of films like, I know I keep coming back to um, The Three Musketeers or The Man in the Iron Mask, Robin, a lot of the Robin Hood era kind of fits into this as well. This is a really great game for you to take a look at. I'm very hard pressed to level any criticism against this game other than the fact that my players just don't seem that into trying it. And that's not really a criticism of the game, that's a criticism of me and my players. And I kind of regret that because there's a lot of really good information in here that would be a lot of fun to play. If you like this sort of game where you get to do a lot of daring do, your characters have weaknesses and foibles, and it has a strong aura of the fantastic, I highly recommend you look at this product. For Game Geeks, I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Good day and good gaming. Okay.